Dua fu, kamu yang baju, kamu yang baju, kamu, kamu. Kamu yang baju, kamu yang You are the senior vice president. No, I finally chopped. <laughs> and your brother is the junior vice president. <laughs> He's my podcast producer, except he is always asleep. So now you'll act out the person, right? Now why are you after me acting? Was I fun? Kalyan? Oh. Hey, hi. 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 What's up? Good. Yeah. How are you? Good, 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 good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes. Now this is something. Oh. Okay. It's always tough. Uh. Okay. Uh. I didn't know what to bring. Oh, wow. Obviously because you review so much food. So I yeah, thought no, this, this is, is something like, you like because I know you like no, bread. No, we, we do and we love Baker's dozen stuff. Perfect. And and as you say in the movie, iska kya zarurat? Welcome to Creative Talkative with Ketki Tiwari. Yeah, we're creative and talkative. There's no stopping this. There's no stopping this. Time to explain what's in our veins, what's in our minds. Take a peek into these lives. Yeah, we're creative and talkative. There's no stopping this. There's no stopping this. Time to Join in for a delicious and wonderful conversation with the country's leading food and travel writer, Kalyan Karmakar, as he talks about being a cat dad and his flavorful take on life. So this is your uh, the, this is your second book yes. which you're writing after ten years almost. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So the first one, which is the traveling belly, you traveled. Oh, that came out in two thousand fourteen. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Almost so ten years. You yeah. traveled uh, across India for that yeah. book. No, not not really. So like I said, my writing is always like a diary. Hmm. So I had traveled a fair bit uh, across India because of my work as a market researcher. Hmm. So do for focus groups and stuff. So, which is why there's a lot more of Bombay in it because I've this thing and followed by Calcutta. So, Bombay and Calcutta are from the perspective of someone who lives there. Yeah. And the others are from a perspective of someone who goes there for three, four days. So, obviously, it won't have um, the perspective of a local. Okay, so let let's speak about the various things that you do because I think the way you have covered yeah. food, I'm not going to you know commercialize yeah. it and say food industry, but the way I think you've covered hmm. food. You have left no hmm. pancake unturned, is what I would like to say. <laughs> yes. So basically, let's begin with uh, your uh, first creative baby, which is the finally chop, yes. which began as a passion project. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, and it is India's, I think, one of the finest travel and Thank food you. blogs, right? Thank you. So uh, when you started writing, okay. Uh, did you actually think that you know it could become something where you would go on writing for the the longest period? Because you know typically what happens yeah. with bloggers, it's especially when people start blogging, is that they started with a lot of hmm. uh, you know enthusiasm, hmm. but then over a period of time, you know it kind of. But now you do so many other things, yeah. but you still find the time. Oh, absolutely, that's my still my. So it's fifteen years old. So uh, you know in October, Kanas named it Find Each Out because the idea was for me to go out. And say that this is what real food is, and this is what the right. problem with uh, this thing, and and that's how it started. It was an right. angry young blog, <laughs> but uh, very soon I realized that I really loved it because it had become a diary of my life. Mm. Of course, a public diary. Well, I think so, in a way, you know, at mm. least this is what I think that uh, you know it brings all your loves together because oh, you know you yeah. were in research, yeah, and yeah. you love to write. But I think that's the same for you, right? Because yeah. you've you've been in uh, advertising and the art uh, side. And and then you became a radio jockey, and yeah. now you're doing a podcast. So the next thing that I want to talk about is you being a columnist for, say, Times, uh, Indian Express, NDTV, BBC, Good Food. I mean, I don't think there's anyone you've left yeah. out. So uh, that happened because they saw your blog and they thought that mm. okay, here is someone who can do it for us. Mm. Or was it something that just kind of uh, happened because you know you 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 clearly took that direction that okay yeah. this is what i want to do now blog is one thing now let me see what all i can explore in food so how did that happen yeah so uh, i would say that whenever i have thought of something and approached someone it's never worked out but most of the things which i've done is because people reached out to me so the first column i used to do was for femina when i was working in research hmm. and they approached me so it was food and travel hmm. uh, then was ndtv good food And they wanted to me to do a thing on culture and food, and I said that's not my area because I'm more a columnist. But you know they had the faith in me, so that started. Then Indian Express restart, and they wanted me to do op-ed columns, which is you know very different. Hmm. 
and then Times of India and by then I was fully uh, into food uh, writing as a profession. Hmm. So they, uh, we collectively created this concept called the Times Kitchen Tales okay. and as a part of that there was a weekly column when the season was on and then um, once a month I'd curate and conduct an event for them in different uh, cities. Your YouTube channel has so many different things. It's not just your show. It has yeah. another uh, vertical called Every Bite Matters, yeah, which yeah. are you know uh, small sort yeah. of videos, which is interesting. Then you also have something called Eat Better, yes. which I think is dedicated yeah. to people who want to lead yes. like a healthier yeah. sort of a, mm. you know. Uh, or there is also Foodocracy. Now I would yeah. really want to talk about that. So how did that idea come about? So that is again an award-winning uh, yeah. podcast. And you highlight sort of women yes. and their journeys uh, in food. General assumption is that when it comes to cooking at home, it's women. Hmm. When it comes to the industry, it's men. So I started uh, doing these lives on that area, which is chatting with women uh, in food. Hmm. And then it became very easy because I could be sitting here and talking with someone in Jamshedpur, uh, Nainital and whatnot. So yesterday I recorded uh, someone who's uh, from Darbhanga doing Makhanas. Okay. So it's I, I was perspiring over here, hmm. and there the internet signal kept breaking because it was too cold. Cold. <laughs> yeah, but but it's just been fascinating. And the and the thing, um, Ketki, is that when I speak to them, hmm. uh, while they tend to be, uh, I mean, they are women, but actually it's their work as a professional, and and, and it's so inspiring. been a like a jury on yeah. uh, almost every big food awards yeah. and now you have your own which is yeah, home, home chefies. Yeah. One thing which I felt was that uh, since everyone was working by themselves mm. um, and they were doing great food mm. uh, they didn't always market themselves and you know in a way like what we used to do in the agency and stuff is that we used to help brands market themselves yeah. right I mean that's what advertising is uh, market research also to an extent so then I said that uh, let's have an award for mm. home chefs then the next question was how do you do it because restaurant awards you're eating at the restaurant and basis yeah, that you're it. saying it so first of all home chefs are spread across the country yeah and now you can't meet mm. and you can't like eat without eating really say who's the best home chef that's of not course. fair but what you can do is you can um, uh, award them on the basis of the brands which they're creating. So do you actually get stopped by people and you know someone asking you something absolutely crazy yeah. like you know aapne yaha pe khaya hai kya order karna hai ya you know yaha ka kaun sa dish bilkul nahi order karna hai something like that I'm sure that must be happening. I do often get queries like that on uh, social media mm. but um, you know if I'm in an area where there are food people like during the upper crust fest and so on there were people who would come up and say that they follow my stuff and things which they like yeah. very occasionally it's happened but again you know if I'm in a cafe or something where mm. someone might come up but nothing at a such <laughs> level of. yeah and, and I must tell you that that now when I meet people mm. they say that you know we follow you and we are big fans of your cats so I'm, I'm oh. not like, oh, know, like I, I feel like uh, a proud cat dad yeah I, you, know. <laughs> you partner with a lot of uh, yeah. you know corporates and companies mm. so you have ITC of course, Marico and Sodexo and all. Yeah. So what is the kind of work you do for them? So I've consulted brands on different ways. So for example with right. uh, Marico, mm. it was a six month uh, panel where I would uh, you know, sit with their products and give feedback. With ITC it was some films which he did around uh, the prawns, Masterchef prawns. Mm. Uh, even the Times of India was a consulting thing plus column because I, I sort of curating the the uh, Times Kitchen Tales property, the mm. theme for the season, theme for the month, getting the thing was uh, that. And very recently I did some uh, work with the Tatas, so where uh, they were having a workshop in Bangalore, in, in one of the food spaces. And I made a <coughs> presentation on uh, how the youth segment is uh, behaving in that particular space and from here online. You know, it's so tempting for me to uh, tell you, I mean, I, I would really like to spend like one week with you because you know, <laughs> the kind of work you're doing, one, it's yeah. really exciting. Secondly, you're doing different things every day, yeah. you know, so if I, I were to actually slice your entire <laughs> week, you know, yeah. uh, so it's basically one day you're, you know, writing, one day you're going out and actually exploring. The third day you're like, you know, doing something, you know, in for branding, like you said. Okay. So, 
I can't imagine living that. I mean, of course, I'm not complaining. Yeah. I live a very exciting yeah, life myself. Yeah, and as a teacher and a <laughs> podcaster. <laughs> yeah, but it's it would be really exciting. And a mom. Earliest memories, you know, childhood memories mm. of food. We all have amazing memories of our mums and going into the kitchen. And luckily, we were born at a time when we used to actually go and sit and eat in the kitchen. Yes. I still remember yes. something which has become very rare now. Yes. So tell me about that. So we lived in England and in Iran for years. So then we moved to India. And for me, India was everything was new: the language, uh, the food, uh, mustard oil. So I would just refuse to eat that. So my mum. would cook separately for me like fried rice or spaghetti or you know um, spanish omelets and and stuff my dad mom and i we'd gone down for breakfast and i must have been maybe 2 or 3 years old mm-hmm. and there was a uh, black pudding which is a sort of black sausage uh, for breakfast and i just got black pudding and i said i don't want to eat it so then the waitress said but how will you know if you don't try it mm-hmm. so then i tried it and i really liked it so i think that that lesson stayed with me that you know i mean at least try it before you decide that you you don't want to have it so i think that's where uh, my uh, the origins of wanting to tell stories about uh, my adopted city which is my city now mm. uh, through the blog and through the walks i think the seeds of that was so i read something very interesting that uh, you write on your twitter which is when you were little mm. you were told stories to make you eat all of us are yeah, yeah of course and now you look for stories when you eat exactly and that's yeah. be my bio right from that's the so beautiful yeah. i just love that Thank yeah you. yeah I think the most important thing is you know you've reached a space where you're so happy like right? you said it yeah. doesn't feel like work you know and to get to that space then it doesn't matter what your yeah. twitter handle yeah. says and you know what you're going to put yeah. out there and your cv and this mm. and that but it's not been an easy journey like so when i moved out of research and i wanted to do something in food mm. but the first year or so i didn't really know what to do mm. and that's when i started uh, you know practicing buddhism in earnest mm. and i think with that i learned to look for purpose and of course the medicines were working parallelly mm. and i think that with slowly then i sort of um, was awakened to my identity as a food writer there's this misconception that uh, <laughs> um people who review food mm. don't actually eat yeah uh, the food you know they mm. just have one bite so ye hota hai matlab you actually eat no, it I, or no yeah so no I, i it is true there are people see and also the season people can get a little bite and get an idea of the food mm. so yeah i mean um it's they don't definitely eat all the food out there your memory of the best meal that you had with kenas maybe in some place <laughs> bit difficult to say uh, which is our favorite because that keeps uh, sort of uh, uh, changing and i've been thinking about this for uh, quite some time and uh, you know once i have the answer i'll tell you so any uh, particular city that uh, you know you haven't covered and you dream of covering hmm. uh, you know through food i i think it would be new york because uh, mm. you know both of us want to go there and uh, you know the person whom i looked up to and came into writing anthony bourdain the late bourdain yeah. so new york was his uh, home yeah. thing so i think new york is where we would like to go and uh, and also mm. experiment with mm. the food so if say for example you were uh, stuck on an island uh-huh. or you know that you're going to go on an island and you could carry also stuck in sakinaka because correct. traffic with all traffic yes that's <laughs> also right yeah. and you could carry only three ingredients with you uh uh-huh. uh to cook yeah. or fix yourself a meal what would those three ingredients be so this is excluding salt and all that no 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 so yeah, salt so, yeah um i think oil um yeah and maybe some cheese is it yeah because the meat i can hunt out over there because and cat food right <laughs> because i'll be with my cats so if i were to tell you that you know as someone who's been uh, in food for so long yeah. if it was your responsibility to kind of highlight mm. one particular cuisine or maybe mm. a couple of dishes uh, you know as indian dishes globally to the mm. world what would those be bengali khichdi because you know the khichdi is often seen as a sick man's food but the khichdi in the rains of durga puja is something which you really look forward to and it's a complete meal if i look at it as a meal the khichdi with the begun bhaja 
the fried aubergine yeah. and the labra which is like a mixed yeah. vegetable sort of thing your take on modern day cuisine or what we call fusion food mm. or even food as an art form so it's great to look at and i think mm. all this you know this deconstructed food yeah. and when you go to a place it's of course the experience but then sometimes at least as someone you know who's been there and had that mm. experience when you're really hungry and you go to this fancy place and they put like food which is like two bites of food in front of you with three drops of chutney and you're yeah. like my god what is this i want real food not chutney emulsion you know there's certain fusion which happens within the society so like maybe someone discovers a combination which makes sense and all and then which becomes a part of the society correct so that's fine mm. um there are chefs who know their flavors and mm. and you know they make combinations which people will like yeah that's also fine within that context mm. But there are people who, for the sake, because yes. that's trending, they will do Shari. that, and which makes absolutely no sense. Yeah. That's not going to really stay or work with uh, the audience. I always believe that nothing unites us and divides us mm. as much as food does. Yeah. Okay. So how do you handle, you know, when people are fiercely loyal? you know to their region and their local mm. food mm. you know so when someone from nagpur will say aap poha is the best someone from pune will say aap poha is and people have this you know they guard it like this and almost to a point where they are putting down other food yes. that you know hey khalle ka you know like <laughs> ours is the best our yeah. tari is the best our this so <laughs> how have you you know have you ever faced something like this and how have you handled it i think that it it really comes down to um, the sort of attitude with which you uh, look at something so for me it's always been It's a combination of two things. One is like um, a confidence in what you are doing. Mm -hmm. So which is why I said that you know one shouldn't look westwards and stuff. But the other side thing is that um, I look at people with a lot of respect. So mm -hmm. so when I go to a place, I, I try to connect with them through their food because you know if you ask someone that what what do they eat, where do they shop for food. They'll be happy to tell you. What about trolling? If I see that it's not really a trolling question, the person genuinely has a question. Yeah. Then I try to answer it. Sometimes, you know, if it's really stupid and I want to have some you fun, no. It. Sometimes I want to have some fun. Achha. I'll just like you know, that. You engage. And, and otherwise, I just like ignore. <laughs> So hmm. enough of uh, serious serious conversation we'll get into something fun. I don't do fun. <laughs> uh, you do and you have a lovely smile so we hope we'll you yeah. laugh a little more. Yeah so we have a game for hmm. you hmm. and there are two parts to the game. I won't have to run or something no. No no. No, no Surya Ram. No, no, okay. no. So we've called it food for thought. So hmm. it's all sitting down aaram se hmm. casually. See thought is good. Thought I can think. <laughs> yeah. The first part of the game is I'm going to give you a few emotions. Okay. Okay. and you are going to give me the first spice name that comes to your mind because okay. we all know that food and emotion go hand in hand but you lacked it out right joy no 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay That's so here goes yeah. yeah so the first one is anger red chili powder red chili powder yeah very very tikha so not, not the not, not the, kashmiri not, not kashmiri. kashmiri the tikha the bedgi uh, karnataka the bedgi yeah. one yeah happiness happiness would be chocolate chocolate yeah And it's a it's an ingredient, cocoa. And normal chocolate, are not that eighty percent cocoa no, no. and uh, it, it, f uh, fruit and nut milk chocolate. Yeah. Okay, envy. Uh, uh, truffle and not truffle oil, but actually mm. shaved truffle. Okay, okay. Yeah. nice. Lust. Mm, hot chocolate. Fear. Oh, fear, fear, fear. Fear would be like something very pungent, like say maybe fish sauce. because mm. you you need to get the balance right yeah. i mean i mean i i like fish sauce but you need to yeah. get the balance right sadness vegetables anxiety um you know, i would say that uh, any tarka like whether it's uh, patch for on or uh, mustard seeds or uh, this thing because if it burns so yeah. you've got a very small window of opportunity when yes. you're doing the tarka or the foron love chocolate okay strawberries a hatred mm, something really bitter mm. methi methi <laughs> seeds karela karela <laughs> and uh, pride ah oh, so pride pride i'll say um, um soy sauce great now the second part is even more interesting because ah. we are relating food with people okay okay so we we all know that so now you like out the person right now why are you after me acting no, no, out no but <laughs> i have to be fun and you so i'm going to give you Paint a picture hmm. of a person, hmm. and you are going to relate it to the dish. 
okay, I'm fine. But but you know, if Kenas comes out and comes back and see the walls are painted. Since you mentioned Kenas, I know she's extremely adorable and sweet. So and she's not the nagging wife. But huh. uh, what food item of what food dish would you relate with a nagging wife? Oh, oh. <laughs> nagging wife. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, nagging wife. So I, I think the millet rotis uh, simply because I know I, I like eating them, <laughs> but uh, it's it's really my dietitian who nags me to eat them. A neighbor who's always complaining. It will be something which is uh, very uh, sort of hot and scalding. So so imagine a vara pav which is nice like a neighbor should be, but it's you know you've taken it fresh from this thing and you put it in your mouth and it just burns. The 3M friend. Uh, 3M friend, I mean, if I take it literally, would be Maggie, cheese and ketchup. Uh, the over-optimistic uncle, you know, who's huh. always telling you, everything will be fine, son. That's whiskey. Whiskey. <laughs> then this one friend, huh. who is uh, always getting you into trouble, giving you the wrong advice for Bacon. Pet. Bacon. <laughs> Forever curious, very nosy auntie, huh. who's like wanting to know everything that's going on in your life. So I say this uh, processed cheese because in Mumbai it goes into every street food. <laughs> you know. So I, you know, like an amul cheese is in everything. But now I'm actually really hungry. <laughs> so where do you want to go? Candies. Good idea. Let's go. Yeah. It's a favorite. Let us tell you what we want to say Not about just getting paid or achieving fame It's about the everyday blood, sweat and tears Dreams and fears, everything you gotta hear Listen From the first steps to the final leap Making headlines in history How they did it, it's no mystery Take a seat, honestly Yeah, we're creative and talkative There's no stopping this, there's no topping this Time for honesty some novelty, sit down with KT, you just hit the lottery. Hope you had as much fun listening as we did talking. Do subscribe for updates on our upcoming episode out every Friday. Like, share and follow us on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram as well as creativetalkative.com. That's creative with a K.